Hello, welcome to Easy Company Gaming Collectibles. And today we're not really doing a collectible, we're more so doing a, uh, what you can say is like a, my review. My review over Star Wars Battlefront 2 because I wanted to do a review. As some of you guys may notice that I've been more into collectibles nowadays and I kind of forgot my gaming route, but everybody loves Battlefront 2. And I, whoever knew me from the beginning, I was a gamer from the start. Battlefront, it's one of those games that will keep on playing in my in my book because no matter who makes it, what makes it, it's it's one of my childhood games that I've been playing since the first battle. That what you can say it's a classic Battlefront that came out, and then from there Battlefront Two, the classic Battlefront Two, and then Battlefronts this and that and whatever it happened. So then when they released the new Battlefront back in 2015, I suppose it was, that's when I get super excited it's coming back. But they didn't have all the additions of um, clone troopers and, and droids and, and all these kind of uh, different other new prequel era maps. Um, they did have some Rogue One stuff, which that was pretty cool, but it just didn't feel complete. And it didn't feel like a Battlefront game that I was waiting on for so long. Now, Battlefront 2... Although it has many flaws, and like Battlefront 1, the 2015 version did not have a campaign, whereas this one does, that is a great addition. Can't complain about that. I love this, uh, this campaign that was in it. Um, the campaign did a lot for me. It showed, uh, it showed a lot of the story that was missing out in, uh, in a Star Wars game like this. It, it, it covered up some um, questions in the movies, even. It was real... Because whatever it is Star Wars, it must be confirmed by Disney as can we make this in the lore or whatnot. So everything you see in the game is going to be real, like Luke Skywalker finding that compass and stuff like that. So um, there's going to be spoilers of the campaign just in case you haven't finished it yet. So as as I played on the campaign and I, I played through that and all whatnot stuff, I, I, I realized how much touch and love and sensitivity it had in the campaign, which I really loved a lot. The campaign was filled with awesomeness. It was just a bunch of story, it was a bunch of characters, and a lot of people said, oh, it shot around different characters and we couldn't really make a good connection. Um, I think as a true Star Wars fan, you already have a good connection, whether it's uh, Aiden Verzio or, or, or as you're playing uh, as Lando Calrissian or Han, you're gonna get a good, a really good feel out of it. I think it's one of the good aspects they did to the campaign. I don't think it was a bad thing at all. I really liked it. I enjoyed playing through all the uh, story. But then it got to the DLC. Well, I'm talking about the campaign first, just to get you on the same page as me. But just when the DLC came out, and then I realized that the DLC was basically a mission or two to just uh, kind of seal the deal. Like, oh, we had pretty bad reviews on the campaign. It was too short. I didn't think it was too short. I didn't think it was bad, but I, it was pretty short. It was pretty short for uh, what it was. Um, the story could have get on, could have went on longer, and you know, did a little bit of more action in it. But I favored it. I still loved it. I I, I wouldn't give it a six point. I don't know what that IGN gave it. Um, I think they could have done a little bit more work on the uh, story as far as longevity. They just needed to work on um. Uh, the DLC, which came out, which was not great for me. I don't know why they uh, kind of shorted you out on the DLC. Because I played the DLC and I thought it was this whole new uh, story pack. But it was just a couple missions just to seal up some uh, empty uh, holes. Which I didn't like. They just kind of killed off the main character. And then here, here's the kid to continue a story in case there is one down the road somewhere. Or whatever they're going to use that girl, her, her daughter for. Um, I think Iden Versio should have lived on and should have carried on, not gotten so old so quick, but it did have some cool references to The Force Awakens, which, which I mean, it, it, it's kind of a cool factor when you see stuff like that, Starkiller base blowing up in the distance and, and whatnot. Her daughter looked like she didn't even care. Her mother died, but, I mean, that's me. Now moving on towards the multiplayer, the multiplayer was good in my in my opinion. It did it did need some a, a ton of patch ups. Like um, the the main thing was uh, you may see a little bit in here. I've seen ex experienced a lot less since they launched a new update for which is which is uh, pretty good because I I 
experienced serious lag issues and it was just I, I stopped playing like sincerely stopped playing this game because the lag was so bad and um just the microtransactions and all stuff was so bad and then a uh, bunch of other things but now they've fixed a ton of things no more microtransactions they took they EA has basically basically figured out they screwed up so um now we have like better uh, servers where the lag is not that bad it is not totally gone so that's another thing it's not totally gone but the lag is still there they thought they fixed it I don't know if they think they fixed it or what but it's still there microtransactions is gone um stuff like that is gone and as for um, the upgrading system like how you level up that I found a, a bit difficult and I don't think that's a good thing yet I think they have a lot more adjusting to do it's it's a bit hard to upgrade um, to uh, uh, to levels of one two or three and whatever star card you have I think it's a bit hard and it's taking a lot of hardcore gaming just to get these things up to par you can use crafting points which I don't like using because then I want to I want to feel out the game and see what I really need, which I haven't even done yet. Um, but they have every single faction in this game, every single faction. First Order, uh, CIS, the Confederates, um, Public Home Troopers, the Imperial Storm Stormtroopers. They have the Rebel Alliance, the the uh, Resistance. Every single uh, alliance is in this game, which is awesome. It's a ton to offer in this game. Free DLCs and. And all kinds of stuff going on, which is so cool. Um, a lot of people are battering it, but I'm going to give it a good review, and I, I'll give it like a 7.5 to 8 out of 10. I mean, that's really good. That's really good because no one's perfect. Not everything's going to be perfect in these games, and I think that's a really good uh, uh, output for this game. Um, is this something you should buy? Yes. Was it Battlefront 1 2015 version of buy? I don't know. I mean, that's kind of iffy. But this is the ultimate Star Wars Battlefront game. For me. They do have, they're just at the beginning, they do have a lot to fix, so they're going to be fixing it. It's EA. They make a ton of mistakes and then they try to fix it. And then sometimes they don't even care and they don't even want to fix it and they keep screwing you over. So, like this, they did free DLCs for everyone. No matter what you get in the game, it's free. Like heroes, uh, maps, or stuff like that. That's a perfect thing. If you want to get a game that's going to be uh, applicable to everyone and everyone playing it, then do that. Do those kind of things that people can actually get into. It. As far as gameplay goes, the, the way it plays and all that stuff, it's it's classic. It's just a classic arcade shooter to me. It's a it's a game a Star Wars fan like me who's been playing Battlefront since the first classic home one. It's it's one that I would enjoy. And then them adding the First Order, I think, adds another uh, thing for me to love the First Order. I just it's just it's just really bringing the movies to life, and that's what really counts for me. It's bringing movies to life, the cinematic experience. EA is is number one for that, bringing the cinematic experience to their video games, which I love. And I don't really want to bash on them because I didn't take part in their microtransactions. I didn't pay a hundred bucks and went ahead and bought all the crap that they sold. So I'm not going to bash on them for that because you really, if you buy what they sell, it's kind of your fault because you you bought it. I mean, you're supporting it. I'm I'm not one of those people. I I analyze for myself and I see what's good and bad and I do whatever I please. But it's just. It doesn't make sense for people to bash EA for what they've doing. They're they're creating an awesome game. I, Disney saying they'll revoke EA's license or the rumors, or whatever going around. That's going to be garbage. I don't think that's ever going to happen. EA's a billion dollar company that can dish out AAA games like it's nothing. I mean, this is a AAA game. This is a solid Star Wars game. Um, you have. Uh, voice actors that are original voice actors, original stuff going on. Everything is being scanned directly from Star Wars props onto the game. I mean, you can't have any other companies doing these type of AAA game stuff. So EA is the is the people for this type of project. So with that being said, I'll say I'll give it a probably a pretty solid eight out of ten. It was a great it's a great game still going, and it's just the beginning. So we have tons of stuff coming out for it probably out in the future within a year and it's going to be awesome replayability because I'm already I love this new crate map they just know how to make maps I mean they're created from Battlefield and Battlefield is an amazing franchise I hate Call of Duty because it's just too 
is this too, uh, I don't know, mainframe type of game, I don't know. But just Battlefield creators, the, the EA dice, they know what to do. The engines are awesome. The graphics are just completely 100%. You're watching a movie while you can play it at the same time. But um, I'm going to leave it there. And Easy Company Gaming with my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, and share the video. And enjoy the rest of the resistance trying to hold off the First Order on Crate on The Last Jedi. And not invulnerable if you have a group of daring, resourceful resistance fighters on your side. With me? Here's the plan. I and disruptors to soften them up. Ski speeders and artillery to take them out. Go. Fire people time to escape. Ski speeders are fast, maneuverable, and almost completely unshielded. The opposite of what we're up against. Take out some ties. Let's go together. ATM-6 is vulnerable. Ski speeder and artillery units, it's up to you now.
Hunter's got a chink in its armor now. Speeder and artillery units. Let's see if we can exploit it. ADM-6 closing in. I got your back. Drawing near. Fight's about to get up close and dead. I'm with you. The first order moving in on a key position in the mine hangar. We can't see control.
I'm with you. going anywhere. The only way left is back in the mine. We need some room to operate if we're gonna get out of here. Keep the power generators running so we can get those shield doors closed. Shut. A new ally 
just landed. This is our chance. Goodbye, Crate. Let's get out of here. 